जय कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जन बल्लभ जय गिरे बर धारी जय गिरे बर धारी जय गोपी जन बल्लभ जय गिरे वर धारी जय गिरे वर जय यशोदानंद जय ब्रज जन रंजन जय ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरावन चारी जय कुंज बिहारी जय यमुना तीरावन चारी जय कुंज बिहारी बन 
चारी जय कुंज बिहारी जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्राज प्रचारष्टोदरक्ष श्रीमद इस डिवाइन गुरे शिल भय चरणारविंद भक्ति वेदांत गोस्वामी महाराज शिल प्रभुपाद की इस कौन बिबिट संस्थापक आचार्य शिल प्रभुपाद की जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्राज प्रचारष्टोदरक्ष श्रीमद इस डिवाइन गुरे शिल भक्त सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर प्रभुपाद की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की नामाचार्य श्रील हरिदास ठाकुर की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासादि गौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गो गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड श्री गिरि गोवर्धन की ब्रजभूमि श्री वृंदावन धाम की नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की गंगा माई की जमुना माई की भक्ति देवी की कृष्ण भक्ति प्रदायिनी श्रीमती तुलसी महारानी की कलयुग पावन हरिनाम संकीर्तन की हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की शिल प्रभुपा ट्रांसनेटल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की शिल प्रभुपा ट्रांसनेटल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मैराथन की निताय गौर प्रेमानंदे ऑल ग्लोरिस टू असम्बल डिबोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस टू असम्बल डिबोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस टू असम्बल डिबोटिस ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरिस टू श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौराम ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञानतिमिरंध से ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुर उन्मिल येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओम विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिवेदस्वामीन नमस्ते नमस्ते सरस्वतीदेव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधर श्रीवासदिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो ट्वेल्व चैप्टर नाइन चैप्टर एंटाइटल्ड मार्कंडेय ऋषि सीज द इल्यूजरी पोटेंसी टेक्स्ट टेन तस्या एकदा भृगुश्रेष्ठ पुष्पभद्र तटे मुने उपसीन से उपासीन से संध्याया ब्रह्मन वायुर्भून महान तस्कदा भृगुश्रेष्ठ पुष्पद्रा तटे मुने उपासीन से संध्याया 
ब्रह्मन वायुर अभून महान तस्यै कदा भृगु श्रेष्ठ पुष्प भद्रा तटे मुने उपासीन से संध्यायाम ब्रह्मन वायुर अभून महान तस्यै कदा भृगु श्रेष्ठ पुष्प भद्रा तटे मुने उपासीन से संध्यायाम ब्रह्मन वायुर अभून महान तस्य वाइल ही एकदा वनडे भृगु श्रेष्ठ ओ बेस्ट ऑफ द डिसेंडेंट्स ऑफ भृगु पुष्पभद्रा तटे ऑन द बैंक ऑफ द रिवर पुष्पभद्रा मुनेह द सेज उपासीनस्य वॉज परफॉर्मिंग वर्शिप संध्यायाम एट द जंक्चर ऑफ द डे ब्रह्मन ओ ब्राह्मण वायु अ विंड अभूत अरोज महान ग्रेट ट्रांसलेशन ओ ब्राह्मण Shaunaka, best of the Bhrigus, one day while Markandeya was performing his evening worship on the bank of the Pushpabhadra, a great wind suddenly arose. Text 11 Tam chanda shabdam samudirayantam balahaka anu abhavan karalala karalaha अक्षस्थविष्ठा ममुचुस तदिद्भी स्वनंत उच्चैर अभिवर्षधारा दैट विंड क्रिएटेड अ टेरेबल साउंड एंड ब्रॉट इन इट्स वेक फ्यूरसम क्लाउड्स दैट वेर अकंपनीड बाय लाइटनिंग एंड रोरिंग थंडर एंड दैट पोर डाउन ऑन ऑल साइड्स टॉरेंट्स ऑफ रेन एस हेवी एस वैगन व्हील्स ततो व्यदृश्यंत चतु समुद्रा समंत तक्ष्मा तलम आग्रसंत समीर वेगोर मिभिर उग्र नक्र महाभयावर्त गभीर घोषा देन द फोर ग्रेट ओशन्स अपीयर्ड ऑन ऑल साइड्स स्वॉलोइंग अप द सर्फेस ऑफ द अर्थ विदर विंड टॉस्ट वेव्स In these oceans were terrible sea monsters, fearful whirlpools, and ominous rumblings. Antar bahir chad bhir atidyu bhir kharai Shatah radadi bhir Shatah, shatah, shatah radha bhir Upatapitam jagat Chatur vidham viksha sahat mana munir Jalaplutam kshmam vimana samatrasat. Samatrasat. 
Translation, the sage saw all the inhabitants of the universe, including himself, tormented within and without by the harsh winds, the bolts of lightning, and the great waves, rising beyond the sky. As the whole earth flooded, he grew perplexed and fearful. Purport. Here the word Chaturvidham refers to the four sources of birth for conditioned souls, embryos, eggs, seeds and perspiration. Hare Krishna. So we are in the twelfth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the last of the cantos in the entire Bhagavad Puran. I remember in 1993, October, Radhanath Maharaj was giving lectures on the tenth canto, killing of the demons and uh, various purports by Thakur Bhakti Vinod, given in his works. And then sometime just after that, he said that we should go from the first canto and Srila Prabhupada's purports. And so approximately that is the time I also joined the ashram and the first canto, first chapter, first verse began, almost end of 93. So when I got the verse, for today's class from 12th canto. So I was contemplating that almost 27 years have passed from the time the Bhagavatam began serially at Chopati from the first canto, 1.1.1 onwards. So amongst the 10 topics of Srimad Bhagavatam, one of the topics is the Nirodha, Sarga Visarga Sthanam Poshana Muteya Manvantra Ishanugatha Nirodha. Nirodha basically means annihilation. So there are different types of annihilation, one which Atyantika, which, uh, one which happens at the end of Brahmaji's life and then during Brahmaji's night and typically all our bodies are going through and every material element is going through its constant changes. But what the Bhagavatam is focusing on and what Shukadeva Goswami wants Maharaj Parikshit to focus on specifically as he is facing the bite of Takshaka is the Atyanti Pralay, which is the dissolution of the false ego, the destruction of the false identity. And that is the ultimate purpose of the narration of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhakti Rakshak Siddhadeva Goswami, he glorifies Srila Saraswati Thakur by writing two verses in which he mentions what is the purpose of the Guru Tattva. And he says, Swairacharabdhi Sammagnam Jeevan Gaurangri Pankaje Udhritya Sharanapatir Mahatmyam Samabodhyat. That the conditioned soul's presence in the material world is mainly because of this false ego. Swairachar means the conditioned soul has independent plans, whimsical thoughts, various stubborn inclinations opinions, desires and therefore Bhagavatam is highlighting that the toughest element to break and to destroy is not diamond or any kind of metal but the toughest item which can be destroyed and affected and infringed is the false ego. And it is such that even time factor cannot touch it. Because when the three types of pralay go through, the false ego is not affected. It continues. Even after Brahmaji's entire lifespan is over, 
but the jivas with the desires certain desires to enjoy in this material world they will maintain those desires till the next creation begins so the false desire to enjoy expressed through this false ego can supersede all kinds of destruction in this world it can go beyond time so therefore the most difficult that's what our gajendra ji also says jiji vishe naham iha muyakim antar bahir cha vrate bhayonya pashyami kalena na yasya viplavo tasyatma loka avarnasya moksham that which cannot be destroyed by the time factor is our desires our opinions our inclinations our tendencies to be the enjoyer and the proprietor and the controller that cannot be automatically destroyed by time factor the body will be annihilated the body will deplete but not that and therefore specific concentrated laser like effort has to be made to overcome that and therefore treatment does not depend on entering the hospital and sitting in the hospital lobby treatment depends on how we are open to subject our skin to the pain of the piercing injection which carries the medicine and allows the medicine to go in and begin the treatment so similarly being saraswati thakur called the temple to be like a hospital the satsanga vaishnava satsanga to be like a hospital so just coming into that satsang alone is like coming into a hospital lobby you are given the opportunity but then unless we make specific efforts then the impact which is intended will not be there so therefore saraswati thakur makes this point swairachar achar means one's behavior and dealing swair means independent swairachar abdhi is ocean so there is an ocean of independent desire so therefore when we say bhava sagar it means an ocean but what are the drops each drop in that ocean is a unique independent desire to enjoy control and experience or express proprietorship so when many such drops come together then that is what is known as an ocean so we create that ocean through those uncontrolled desires and therefore we are drowning in that ocean and that's what narottam das thakur says that gaurapahu na bhajiya mainu prem ratana dhana hilai harainu adhana yatana dhana dhana tyaginu apana karma dube apni dubinu apana karma doshe apni dubinu so it is through our moment to moment choices which we make that we decide to create further drops add to the drops add to the volume in that ocean or through our choices we can make efforts to evaporate that ocean by receiving krishna's grace tesham aham samuddharta mrityu samsara sagarat bhavami na chirat parth so the famous painting in the bhag in the bhagavad gita which represents the 12th chapter verse where there is this person who is drowning and lord is appearing on garuda so therefore shokashru sagaram visheshana matyudaram it is only the lord by his mercy glance and desire can evaporate 
this ocean and relieve us. So therefore, Swairachar Abdhi Sammagnan Jeevan, the Jeevas are drowning in this ocean, struggling. And so, the only way they can be delivered is Gaurangri Pankaji. When they attain the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Udhritya Sharnapatir. How will they know about Lord's lotus feet? When they are given the instruction. Udhritya means taught. To be indicated, to be instructed. Udhritya. About what? Sharanapatir. About the surrender. Sharanagati. Udhritya Sharanapatir Mahatmyam. Unless there is an alternative narrative, the jiva continues to drown and he feels that this ocean is everything. So he has to have an alternative. So Sharanapatir Mahatmyam, the Mahima, the glories, the power, the super excellence, the influence of surrender as something attractive and not something fearful has to be presented to the jiva. Otherwise, as soon as a conditioned soul hears the word surrender, the word surrender sounds like thunder. And he just doesn't want anything to do with it. And therefore, uh, this whole idea of taking shelter of Krishna, Mahatmyam, that Mahima has to be taught to him, Samabodhayat. So, Bodhayat means to teach, but Samabodhayat means properly, in a way which, as per the adhikar of that conditioned soul, they find this instruction attractive, palatable, and want to take more. Right? And therefore, uh, when Vibhishan comes in front of Lord Ram and he says, you know, he's standing with his four associates. So Vibhishan expresses his predicament and he looks at Lord Ram that Lord Ram is Raghavaya Mahatmani Nivedayatamam Kshipram Vibhishanam Upasthitam. He says, my dear Lord, you are the one who gives shelter to the entire creation. Please accept the plea of surrender from me, Kshipram, quickly. So he adds the word Kshipram. Why? Because during the course of the soul's journey, while trying to be the controller and enjoyer and the proprietor, there are very rare moments where the soul will come across a crossroads where he gets an opportunity to walk down the path of bhakti. Otherwise, kshut parito yathadina sarameya graham graham charana vindanti yadhishtam dandam odanam evava. The soul is continuing the old beaten up path of getting repeatedly beaten by material energy. And therefore, now and then, the soul sees there is a sign which says the Bhakti Highway. And if the soul doesn't give sufficient attention to that, he will miss that crossing and go ahead. Jana asthaya naro rajanna pramadhyat karhichit dhavan nimilya vanetre na patet na So that is a very crucial junction. And so Vibhishan is saying, at this moment I am standing at this junction, but I am coming from a demoniac background. And that spark of changing my desire and becoming a servant, becoming subservient to your desires, it has just, it is like a small spark which has just come about in my heart. If you do not accept my plea at this moment, the spark is so small, 
it will die down because of my previous demoniac tendencies and therefore please do not delay in deciding whether you will accept me or not nivedeta maam kshipram vibhishanam upasthitam and therefore vibhishan comes with four associates who represent the four limbs of sharanagati what are the four limbs of sharanagati as per shri pad ramanujacharya akinchanatvam means i possess nothing ananya gatitvam i possess no other destination shakti the lord is supremely powerful and he can offer his surrender to anyone any time anywhere without any precondition and saralta means the lord is so simple that he will not keep anybody's sins against them or however sinful one's background may be the lord immediately accepts he is very simple and he does not hold anyone's huge track record of sins in the past however many times one may have lost been lost in the path of this material world but whenever one gets a desire to come on the highway of devotional service the lord immediately allows and therefore udhritya sharanapatter mahatmyam sama bodhayat that is any person who helps a conditioned soul change their desires change their opinions change their priorities they become gurus they are known as guru they are empowered by the chit shakti of the lord chit shakti is the knowledge potency and that knowledge is how serving krishna serving krishna's devotees is a much better more luxurious long term alternative than try to be the proprietor and the enjoyer so at whatever level of devotional service we may be in if we are able to transmit this knowledge of sharanagati and become instruments in that transmission one actually becomes a guru one may be path pradarshak guru shiksha guru diksha guru whatever and therefore shila prabhupad you know why the book distribution is emphasized so much because we are becoming instruments in giving people the knowledge by which their priorities will change and so he says yastasya bhakti siddhanta saraswati prabhur guru ha huh. that shila saraswati thakur is that personality who came in our lives he says atyudaram padam bhoj dhulisyam janma janmani that lotus feet of shri guru is very compassionate the dust of that lotus feet actually helps us dhulisyam janma janmani that for millions of lifetimes we have been roaming around within this jigsaw puzzle within this quagmire of material existence unable to come out of the forest of material existence the dense dark suffering but then only once in a very rare moment a bona fide person comes and shows us the way out and therefore that person is revealed as atyudara padam bhoj dhulisyam janma janmani so the dust is nothing but the opportunity given to serve through the instruction and so gurudam granthadam gaura dhamadam namadam muda bhaktidam bhuridam vande bhakti vinodakam sada he says similarly shila bhaktivinod thakur is great because he gave us guru he gave us saraswati thakur gurudam 
Granthadam, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in spite of being the district magistrate, he spent substantial part of his time writing books. Granthadam, Gauradhamadam, he gave us Lord Chaitanya's birthplace, revealed Lord Chaitanya's birthplace, Gauradhamadam. Namadam, Thakur Bhaktivinoda, towards the last six, seven years of his life, totally went into seclusion, showed by his own example in Jagannath Puri, how to relish the inner secrets of the holy name and he has written several books like Bhajan Rahasya and Harinam Chintamani to share the power of the holy name. Bhaktidam Bhuridam Vande Bhakti Vinodakam Sada So therefore, to get this knowledge is considered to be the rarest jewel. And when the jiva connects with this knowledge and decides to turn around one's desire in that direction, then that is a moment of fortune in the soul's life. So that is known as the Swatantrata Ratna. Swatantrata Ratna means the jewel of independence. So when one uses that free will, that choice, to think of how to serve and please Krishna, that is a historic moment in the jiva's journey within this material existence. And that is a mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Name Ruchi, to help the souls ask continuously the question, Kirtaniya Sadahari, how can I serve Krishna? How can I please Krishna? To put into words the transcendental, constant, thundering emotion of Braj Bhumi. How can I serve and, Krish and please Krishna? Which is radiating within every atomic fraction of Braj. That is brought into the ecosystem of devotional practice through Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's personal example. He translates those constant esoteric emotions of Braj into the life of a practicing devotee by his own example. And that's why every canto of Bhagavatam begins with the life sketch of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because without understanding Mahaprabhu's life, we cannot enter into the inner secrets of the Srimad Bhagavat. And therefore, Paratmanishtha Matra Veshadharan Mukunda Sevai Hoi Samsarataran. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the sannyas order only for one purpose. There was only one agenda when Mahaprabhu accepted sannyas that from Katua I will go straight to Vrindavan and settle down in Vrindavan and be in the mood of the Brajavasis and Srimati Radharani. That was Mahaprabhu's only plan. But then Nityanand Prabhu had other plans and he changed his direction. But Paratma Nishtha, Matra Veshadharan. So Vesh is not important. The Vesh represents the consciousness. Just like a police has a particular Vesh, a doctor has a particular Vesh, uh, a judge has a particular Vesh. So all those Veshas represent what kind of contribution those personalities are making in society. What is their profession? How are they making a difference in this world? So the Vesh represents that and as soon as you see that Vesh, you understand, oh, these are, this is how they are making their contribution. So then, as soon as someone is, you know, wearing the Vesh of a Vaishnav, Vaishnav Vesh, so what does it indicate? Paratma Nishtha. He has only one Nishtha, that his desires are aligned and harmonious with Krishna's desires of how to serve and please him. 
मुकुंद सेवाए होए समसार तारण हाउ मुकुंद कैन बी सर्वड लाइक दैट सो देर फॉर दिस इज द एसेंस ऑफ यू नो लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभु एक्सेप्टिंग द रिनाउंस्ड ऑर्डर नामे रुचि constantly chanting the holy names constantly repeating chaudike te sab lok bole hari hari prema veshe madhye nritya kare gaur hari constantly chanting lord chaitanya mahaprabhu attracted people around him who were absorbed seeing his ecstasy nirvikar haridas gambhir aashay bolite lagila tare hoiya sadai when maya devi tried to bewilder thakur haridas he was untouched nirvikar why because his intention was very deep gambhir aashay what was his intention i want to be a servant so many people feel that distraction of the mind is caused because of external objects distraction of the mind just like one may think that the fall of a building due to the storm is happening because of the storm but the fall of the building due to the storm is happening because the foundation is not sufficiently deep that which is invisible is actually the cause of affecting the visible and nirvikar haridas haridas was unaffected although there was an external storm this maya devi pers- personified in shantipur was trying to bewilder him when he was living in that cave in shantipur gambhir aashay aashay means intention it was very gambhir the foundation of his practice the foundation of his visible practice was very deep so first he focused on his intention which was deep 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 and deep and what was that intention i want to be a servant i want to be a servant of krishna to be enjoyed by the lord to be completely under the subservience of the lord's will that intention when it is deep finds its expression in the prayer of the hare krishna mahamantra please engage me in your service if the prayer is louder than the intention then the external storms which may come they will ultimately reveal the lack of depth and then the prayer cannot continue and there will be interruptions so therefore uninterrupted devotional service very much depends on the depth of that intention and that is what mahaprabhu came to share navadipe e shakti na koila prakase se shakti prakase nistarila dakshina deshe mahaprabhu saw disturbances in navadip he thought okay my commitment to my bhajan is solid so i will continue somewhere else and he went on to south india and he went to jagannath puri he continued on so when the intention is really strong and it flows like honey which falls upon a deity without interruption without break that uninterrupted flow of intention protects us ensures us against all possible attacks of unlimited sense objects and situations from the external world and though and then one is able to do the next mission properly which is vaishnav seva so name ruchi leads to vaishnav seva because what i have intended and what i have expressed i can that means when i am expressing i am begging i am asking for something when i am asking for something then i am looking and naturally when that thing comes i can recognize it immediately because i have been eagerly looking for it so therefore distraction is not caused because of chaotic environment distraction is caused because of a
chaotic internal environment where there is no focus where there is confusion about what i am searching for because if you have lost your smartphone in the kumbh mela so even in that kumbh mela when you are moving around there is a sense of absorption because you know what you are looking for so when you know what you are looking for how many people and how many horns are honking and how many vehicles are moving around do not affect you so much because you have clarity over what you are looking for and you are trying to reclaim that so our mission is to reclaim the souls eternal servitorship which has been stolen because of distraction and uh, therefore uh, bhukta bhoga parityakta drishta dosha cha nityasha na ishwarasya ashubham dhatte sve mahimni sthitasya cha we have to reclaim the glory we have lost it when you have lost something valuable you are extremely focused and when you are not sure whether you have lost then you are just casual and looking around at everything so the way you go through you know a public place when you don't have any particular you know agenda in mind is different from when you are in a public place but you are focused on looking for something specific so therefore when we are having the intention to serve the vaishnavas when you are having the intention when we are expressing that intention in the form of the prayer of the hare krishna maha mantra so naturally as soon as an opportunity comes at our doorstep we have to recognize because we have been praying for it we have been thinking about it then when it manifests we grab it so then the name ruchi evolves into vaishnav seva vaishnavir gunagrahi na dekhai dosh kai mane vakya kore vaishnav santosh and therefore if that is our main purpose if you have gone somewhere looking for gold so you do not mind even if the ambience of where you are going to get that gold is not good because you know behind the gutter is the broken down shop and inside the broken down shop is the dirty looking man but he has a suitcase which has within it pure gold so na dekhai dosh you will not see any dosh because you are looking for that gold so therefore the devotees the vaishnavas they become instrument for us to find what we have lost our servitorship so therefore our focus should not be on questioning other servitorship our focus should be how all of these personalities can become instruments in finding my own lost servitorship kai mane vakke kare vaishnava santosh and therefore with body mind and words we try to serve and please the devotees because by pleasing the vaishnavas then krishna is pleased and then we start experiencing the fragrance of that krishna bhakti and service to the lord so therefore tada tada hamishasya bhaktanam sham abhipsata anugraha manyamana pratishtham disham uttaram when narad muni he experiences the loss of his mother at the age of 5 but because he has served the vaishnavas he understands 
that yes i have lost my mother i was dependent on her but ultimately i have an eternal relationship which i have to now find so therefore he went out in search for that bhaktanam sham and in this way he started remembering krishna as the ultimate benefactor of his devotees bhaktanam sham abhipsata so therefore uh, kaviraj goswami while he is writing the chaitanya charitamrita he actually considers himself totally dependent on the vaishnav grace and he says chhota bada bhakt gan vando sabar sri charan sabe more kar ha santosh swarup gosai ramata roop raguna janiyat tai likhi nahi mar dosh that whether the devotees here in vrindavan are big or small so saraswati thakur says there are three categories of vaishnavas the first category is that one who is initiated is the first category he is known as chota vaishnav one who has just got initiated means just started the process then the next is one who decides that from this day onwards i will try to follow the principles of sharanagati i will take the principle of surrender seriously so that category is very clearly separately delineated from the one who is initiated so just initiation does not automatically mean one begins the process of surrender so then the third is that one who has internalized that process of sharanagati and surrender and he has made his will one with the will of the lord and the vaishnavas right so all the three technical terms also he gives in that purport prabhupad so chhota bada bhakt gan vando sabar sri charan rather than judging and analyzing and distinguishing i just offer my respects to all of them sabe more kar ha santosh may all be pleased because as far as my mission is concerned i am dependent on all of their pleasure and therefore whatever i am writing swarup gosai ramata roop raguna janiyat tai likhi nahi mar dosh i am just trying to write whatever i have heard in the parampara ha ah, so therefore vaishnav agya and vaishnav seva is the second element which lord chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, mentions and shila prabhu par told his disciples in the 1966 after he established iskon they were asking that we are school drop college dropouts we are coming from so many different kinds of backgrounds how is it that you know you are trusting us so much and prabhupad said that you have one qualification you are trying to fulfill my desire you are sincerely trying to fulfill my desire and through that other qualifications are manifesting so guru kripa swami he was with uh, devotees in mumbai in the initial days when prabhupad saw harinam sankirtan at that time prabhupad said that we should also start the life membership and try to make members so he went to kalba devi market guru kripa swami and he was trying to tell someone about iskon and bhagavad gita he was showing the bhagavad gita so there were a group of you know shopkeepers afternoon time not too many customers come so shopkeepers they come together and they start having their you know chit chat so two three shopkeepers were sitting in one shop and he went guru kripa swami showed the bhagavad gita started explaining and then one of the shopkeepers started you know he they were intrigued to see you know american man in uh, sadhu clothes shaved head so they thought okay afternoon time no customer good time pass so they started saying are what you are talking about uh, krishna spoke to arjuna 
Arjuna is not the real hero of Mahabharata. Karna is the real hero. So they thought, okay, let us have some debate. So Guru, Guru Kripa Swami at that point, he looked at them and then said, no, no, actually Arjuna is the uh, main hero. And then he started explaining a few verses here and there, whatever he knew. But they didn't agree and they started, you know, some other sections of the Mahabharata and he had not read Mahabharata and all so much. They only knew, you know, specific things which they had heard from Prabhupada. And so they started arguing and they started putting forward arguments and he was defending and saying, no, no, you know, Arjuna is the real hero and, you know, in the last verse uh, of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also says, but they were not ready to listen and they started laughing and said, Arey, what do you know? You are from America and you are just a new guy. We are all born here. We know everything. And then, you know, it became a little difficult for him to bear. So he slammed his fist on the table and he said, Arjuna is the hero. Understand? And when he shouted and screamed like that, they looked at him and said, hey, what your guru is teaching you? You claim to be a disciple of Swami Prabhupada that in spite of being a disciple and studying Bhagavad Gita and chanting Hare Krishna, you are becoming so angry. What improvement is there in you? So he said, three years back, if this conversation had happened, I would have punched you on the nose and you would be bleeding by now. But thanks to the Harinam I am chanting and by Guru's grace, I have controlled myself so much that I only hit the table. So there is a huge transformation. And so I am experiencing that transformation and I am trying to share as per my capacity. So Srila Prabhupada appreciated the fact that with all limitations, with whatever qualifications and disqualifications one is making an effort an attempt to push the mission in the forward direction and so Vaishnav Seva is the second principle which Mahaprabhu emphasized Murkhani Chakshudra Mai Bhishay Lalas Vaishnav Agya Bole Kore Etek Sahas so therefore, Kaviraj Goswami says that I do not have any qualification. I am Murkha, I am foolish, Nietzsche, I am fallen, Kshudra, I am insignificant. Vishaya Lalas, and I am also uncontrolled in my senses. But what is my only qualification? Vaishnav Agya Bale. The only power I have is the power of the devotee's will. I put more faith in the will of the Vaishnavas more than in my personal skill. Vaishnava Agya Bole Kore Etika Sahas. And therefore, I am making effort to do things which within my normal skill sets would be deemed impossible or would be seen as over ambitious or would be seen as preposterous proposal. What is this? How can you even think of doing like this? At this age of 90s, you are trying to write a literature and trying to re recollect history. Is this the age to recollect? This is the age to forget. And you are saying that, you know, this is the age. If somebody at 90 says, I want to be a yoga teacher, Are that is when the body parts are breaking apart. But Kaviraj Goswami is saying that I agree as far as the normal skill is concerned one is at a stage of life where practically one loses everything. But I am trying to gain the Vaishnava's grace by trying to just fulfill this. And so Sri Rupa Raghunath Charanir Eibal Jara Smrite Siddha Hoye so our fulfillment of desires in devotional service happens by Sri Raupa Raghunath Charanir Eibal 
by putting faith in the lotus feet of the goswamis shri rupa raghunath charaner and having faith that time is not a barrier space is not a barrier in accessing spiritual power spiritual power is accessed beyond time and space and it is accessed when one aligns one's will with the will of those vaishnavas and therefore that is the grace of the parampara so we are not alone we may be struggling but our struggle is supported by a very powerful lobby which is the vaishnav sampradaya so therefore prabhupada mentioned about management some uh, interesting points prabhupada said five points he mentions number one he says manage nicely let the movement go forward number two manage nicely but number two make sure that the movement is going forward third is organize fourth is don't go backward in your habits in your thought process in your faith even if there are some obstacles and difficulties and fifth he says be careful of the influence of material energy so therefore prabhupad mentions a very important point when one becomes fixed up in devotional service he says that one experiences two symptoms what are the two symptoms of one who is fixed up in devotional service he says a fixed up devotee in devotional service never allows number 1 a person and number 2 a problem he does not allow a person or a problem to do two, two things to hamper his service or to discourage him in any way very interesting prabhupad makes this this is a symptom of being fixed up in devotional service let us not allow any person or any problem to either hamper our devotional service or discourage us in any way so prabhupada has another interesting statement he says i may be discouraged but not disappointed that means when some event or incident happens so there may be some temporary you know feeling oh why this you know how this came about but not that why should i continue no that is disappointment when one starts questioning should i continue so prabhupada said i may be discouraged but not disappointed and therefore dishtya bhrata pravayasa idanim aprajasyate prajashaya nivrattasya prajayat samapadyata this is the famous discussion happening between vasudev and nand maharaj when nandotsav happens nandastu atmaj utpanne jata lado mahamana aruhya vipran vedagyan snata shuchi alankrita that nand maharaj is experiencing the peak of bliss atmaj utpanne after a long time child has been born jat ahlado already he is nanda and krishna is born so he is even more in ecstasy so our tendency is that when we experience distress we look for breaks but when we are going through pleasure we don't look for a break we don't try to break an episode of joy when pleasure comes because we are pleasure seeking we wants to prolong the experience of pleasure so krishna 
with Nanda Maharaj and Nandotsa being celebrated by the entire Braj, it was an experience of uninterrupted bliss. Gopa Parasparam Hrishta Dadik Shira Gratambubi Asim Chanto Vilim Panto Navanita Chachikshipu. They are just throwing various you know, milk products on each other, godhan, enjoying, celebrating Krishna's appearance. So the bliss is, has reached unprecedented levels. Who wants to stop that? But Nanda Maharaj is qualified to be Krishna's father because his focus is not on his personal bliss. His focus is on what is best for Krishna. So immediately the thought comes, if the king sends his men to collect taxes, hearing so much of you know festival happening, and then they try to harm the child, it is not good. So better I go and pay the taxes in Mathura itself. Kamsasya varshikyam, varshikyam. Let me just go and pay the taxes there. So Nanda Maharaj interrupts his bliss to go and meet Kamsa so that he doesn't come and bother Krishna. So that is the idea that he is thinking about what is required for Krishna. So when at that moment he meets Vasudevji, so Vasudevji has lost six sons. It is an it has been a period of great disaster. This entire year has been difficult for all of us. So much of disappointment, so much of destruction, so much of deaths. So when things appear dark, so we have to look for the silver lining, and the philosophy helps us see the larger picture. So Vasudevji has lost six sons. And so when Nanda Maharaj comes, we would expect Vasudevji to start telling Nanda Maharaj, his closest friend, do you know what I went through over the last few years about how Kamsa in front of my eyes picked up each and, each and every of my six small, tiny, few hours old children raised them above his head and smashed their tender body against the hard rock for the fountain of blood to splash in all directions. And I had to see each one of that. So he could have actually begun like that because to lose six sons in such a ghastly manner can be extremely traumatic. So one cannot imagine the kind of trauma which Vasudeva and Devaki had to go through in that jailhouse of Kamsa. The bliss of Janmashtami sometimes covers over the severe distress which Vasudeva and Devaki had to go through. And that was real. It was not that they were both, you know, winking at each other saying, Leela, this is all part of Leela. These children are also there somewhere, you know, and, you know, he'll sort it out. No, it was not like it was some kind of a, a shooting going on. They were actually totally involved. And so when Nanda Maharaj meets Vasudevji, the first thing Vasudevji says is, he is glorifying Nanda Maharaj, expressing his joy that he got a son. He doesn't say son, he says progeny. Dishtya bhrata pravayasa idanim aprajasyate So far you were without praja. Praja shaya nivrattasya prajayat samapadyata At last you got a praja, progeny. Why he says praja? Because if he said son, it would be a lie. Because actually the son was born to Vasudeva and he Trans, uh, you know, transferred that son and brought the daughter. So therefore, rather than saying son, he is saying praja, your progeny. Praja yat samapadyata. 
and actually you had lost hope for a long time but at last you got naikatra priya samvasa suhrudam chitra karmanam oghena vyuhamananam plavanam srota soyatha and so he says just like various sticks come together for some time and they disperse like that i can see that you know sometimes we meet situations and people we like other times we have no control over it but we have to just accept it as part of destiny nunam adrishta nishthoyam adrishta nishtha the destiny cannot be controlled and in this way vasudev ji he actually is in the mood to glorify nanda maharaj and when nanda maharaj hears this nanda maharaj pacifies vasudev and sympathizes with what vasudev has gone through and in this way both are very unique why both are concerned in celebrating the other's joy and mitigating the other's distress and that is what a vaishnav sangha is supposed to do when mahaprabhu says vaishnav seva our service is to inspire other devotees to encourage them in their joyful moments to participate and expand that joy and to mitigate their distress by serving them in the best possible manner so that's what you know here we see in the exchanges between vasudev and nanda maharaj also and when mahaprabhu takes sanyas and he comes by nityanand prabhu's arrangement he comes to shantipur and there sachi mata is already there and sachi mata when he sees when she sees lord chaitanya mahaprabhu for the first time after sanyas her heart is broken and she is crying tears unlimitedly and she looks at lord chaitanya mahaprabhu's beautiful face and shaved head his curly long locks of hair have been removed forever and when sachi mata looks at nimai she cries and she says kandiya kohe na sachi bachare nimai vishwarupa sama na koriha nithurai that oh my dear boy nimai please do not behave like vishwarup and what did vishwarup do sanyasi hoya punah na dila darshan tumi taiche kaile mora hoibe maran if after sanyas you do not give me darshan then i will die because that's what vishwarup did he never showed up and when mahaprabhu hears this he says kandiya bole na prabhu shuna mora ai tomar sharir e mora kichunai this body belongs to you you can instruct me the way you want tomar palit deh janma toma hoite this body has been brought forth by you nourished by you koti janma tomar rin na pari shodhite and for millions of lifetimes i cannot repay the debt which i owe you my dear mother and therefore lord chaitanya mahaprabhu says tumi jaha kah ami tahai rahib wherever you tell me to stay i will stay there only tumi jai aagya kar sei to karib whatever instruction you give me i will do that so lord chaitanya has taken sanyas with the exclusive intention of being in braj that's his original idea that is his original plan but when he sees the tears of sachi mata lord chaitanya mahaprabhu demonstrates 
द हार्ट ऑफ अ वैष्णवा अ वैष्णवा अलाउज द लाइन्स ऑफ हिज प्लैंड टू बी इरेज बाय द टीयर्स ऑफ द अदर वैष्णवास एंड महाप्रभु मेक्स डिफरेंट प्लैंड एंड गिवज शची माता द अथॉरिटी टू डिसाइड हिज फ्यूचर and thus he demonstrated that he is the ideal sanyasi the ideal renunciation because renunciation is not renouncing assets renouncing position renouncing wealth renouncing influence but renunciation is the willingness to renounce various intentions which may be vaishnav seva pratikul and to accept various intentions which may be vaishnav seva anukul and that is the two most important principles of sharanagati to accept that which is favorable and to reject that which is unfavorable so therefore you know this was so amazing that lord chaitanya mahaprabhu then asks shati mata where should i stay then she tells him you stay in jagannath puri so mahaprabhu is the ideal personification of the bhagavat and that's why prabhupad makes sure that the shrimad bhagavatam every canto has at the beginning lord chaitanya's life sketch because then only you can understand the bhagavat without going through the person bhagavat you cannot understand the book bhagavat and therefore when uh, uh, roop and sanatan they depart so ragunath das goswami is in great separation and then he looks at braj bhumi vrindavan with uh, amazing govardhan giriraj hill radha kund sham kund you know yamuna river the twelve forests but he looks at all of that and he says shunyayate maha goshtham girindro ajagarayate he says this braj is looking to be like empty void shunyayate maha goshtham the twelve forests the twelve great forests appear to be shunyayate girindro the gordhan uh, hill appears to be ajagarayate appears to be a huge python which will devour me vyagra tundayate kundam and the radha kund which is supposed to be the embodiment of the pinnacle of all kinds of theological conceptions the place of the most intimate pastimes of radha and krishna the place where krishna is pleased the most by shrimati radharani she says vyagra tundayate appears to be the open gaping mouth of a tiger jeevatu rahitasya me that now i have to live without the association of such amazing vaishnavas because following their will was my nourishment and now how will i do that and therefore that is the second thing of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu which is vaishnav seva name ruchi vaishnav seva and then when we serve and please the vaishnavas then it automatically creates feelings within the heart of compassion for others so the unique principle is that when one's personal ecstasy grows one's ability to perceive others distress also increases 
So the Vaishnava heart is a very unprecedented place where apparently contradictory flavors are coexisting. That only a blissful Vaishnava can actually be sensitive to the distress and the suffering of others. Because one may think, oh, if one is blissful, that is the idea about who is blissful. But the more one is intoxicated in the bliss of being a servant of Krishna, the bliss is in being the servant of Krishna, so more one recognizes how much responsibility I have towards all the other children of Krishna and how much opportunity I have to relieve Krishna's distress because he is in distress seeing the condition of all of them. Let me assist. And that is how Jivedaya or the compassion manifests. So therefore, you know, this is a very important uh, principle to appreciate. And there are three things which prevent us from reaching our potential. The first is self-doubt. The second is we give up too early. And third is we do not push hard enough. The mission of the Lord is very, very sublime and transcendental. But it is not easy. And therefore, if one thinks, oh, I am trying to uh, show compassion, trying to share Krishna consciousness, people are not accepting it, I am not experiencing the reciprocation, forget it. So you may just be on the verge of breaking the stone and if you give up then the next person who hits he'll get the benefit so we have to keep going at it so therefore in the 10th canto when Yashoda Mai looks into Krishna's mouth the Mrida Bhakshana Leela what that demonstrates that Krishna is trying to break Yashoda Mai's vatsalya and saying, Are, see my power, see my power. But Sadyo Nashta Smritir Gopi Saropya Arohamatmajam Atmajam Prabhridha Sneha Kalilam Khridaya Asit Yathapura Yashoda Mai sees all the universes. Yashoda Mai sees the pure unalloyed display of power, opulence, aishwarya and she saw that and she got temporarily affected aham mamasa patiresha me suto and she started getting self-doubt oh I thought I am the queen and these are all belonging to me gopyascha gopasa hagodhanascha me yan mayate I am thinking I am so good mother that I can protect Krishna from so many difficulties but looks like all my efforts are getting wasted. Every time I am trying to do something, something is failing. So she gave up that attempt and then she depended totally. But at that moment, she could have immediately started worshipping Krishna as the one who... That was the difference between Arjuna and Yashoda Mai. Both saw the universal form. Arjuna also saw the universal form. Yashoda Mai also saw the universal form. When Arjuna saw the universal form, he immediately started offering prayer. Saketi Matva, Prasam Yadukram, He Krishna, He Yadav, He Saketi. But Yashoda Mai, Pravurdha Sneha Kalilam, Hridaya Sit Yathapura. Her heart became overwhelmed with Vatsalya. And therefore, that vatsalya could not be shaken. And so, traya, 
उपनिषद्भिश्चांख्य योग उपगीय माना महात्म्यम हरे रसा अमन पुत्र का यशोदा माई कंटिन्यू टू हैव फर्म कन्विक्शन दैट दिस इज माई चाइल्ड ओनली एंड देर फॉर कृष्णा कुड नॉट शेक दैट कन्विक्शन विद इन अर हार्ट एंड वॉट वॉज हर मूड कृष्णा इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन मी नाम सुखापो भगवान देही नाम गोपिका सुत ज्ञानी नाम चात्म भूता नाम यथा भक्ति मताम दैट वॉज द होल दामोदर लीला एपिसोड टू शो हाउ नॉर्मल सोल्स अप्रोच कृष्णा एंड से प्लीज प्रोटेक्ट मी प्लीज नरिश मी ब्रजवासीज आर लुकिंग फॉर अपॉर्चुनिटी टू प्रोटेक्ट कृष्णा एंड नरिश कृष्णा and so those who are followers of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu following in the footsteps of the brajavasis are trying to assist krishna support krishna help krishna and that is the mood of compassion that one cannot think one can think oh people are suffering ye bhagwan ne banaya sab ko hoy dekh lenge he'll take care and the other mood is i must offer my service i must offer my drop yes there is an ocean of service which is flowing but the important thing is i have to offer my contribution of my drop and utilize the opportunity so yashoda mai was totally focused how i have to nourish krishna and she would not allow any other she was a perfect emblem of anya bhilashita shunyam so krishna showed the power this that everything but no i cannot distract myself from my bhav of giving to krishna and by looking at that aishwarya my bhav cannot change to how can i take from krishna and that's the whole idea of duryodhan and arjuna duryodhan was shown the armies and he became very inspired arjuna saw the armies but arjuna wanted to serve and please krishna and so when do things work in the preaching mission when we are trying to share compassion and all through the covid times also we have seen how our Uh, efforts in preaching have gone through various challenges there will be challenges but the mission has to continue in spite of those challenges and so when has any preaching become successful not any preaching or a project connected to preaching has never become successful because of assets it has always become successful because of the attitude if the attitude is there then the assets will follow if the assets are there you cannot expect attitude will come and that's what we hear we learn from shila prabhupad's life in the lilamrita assets came and went gaudiya mat was breaking down all the senior you know disciples of saraswati thakur whom shila prabhupad had known at that time you know they were all there shila prabhupad had his particular mission and then he continued on so therefore when people decide to commit that's where the transformation begins so commitment is the beginning when the mission of compassion begins to have its impact and so what is commitment mean commitment means three things i am going to keep going till this works because nobody can stop that feeling from outside 
I am going to keep going till this works. That was Yashoda Mai in the Damodar Leela. I am going to keep going till this works. So Matu Svinnagatraya Vistrishta Kavara Sraja Drishtva Pari Shramam. So what is Pari Shramam? Shramam. But Pari means Parisar, 360 degree. When the word Pari is used, it refers to something which is all encompassing. That means this effort, I tried, it failed. I go to the next. I try this. This failed, okay, I go to the next. This failed, no, I go to the next. So there may be repeated failures, but my efforts will continue. Shrama will continue. So I am Shrama Parayan. And nobody can stop me from being Shrama Parayan. There may be so many things externally which may happen here, there, this, that. But I am going to keep going until this works. This is the first aspect of commitment. Second, no matter what challenges are there, I will try to figure it out. I will face those challenges. That is the second element of commitment, willingness, eagerness to face the challenge, whatever it may come. Third, that I will continue in my effort long enough. And when we continue long enough, then Krishna also, at some point of time, you know, shows different ways in which things can improve. And therefore, if Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could not go to Vrindavan, he had to go to Puri, and he had a mission to establish Vrindavan, it could have been easier for him to establish all the temples even before he ended his pastimes in 1534, if Rupa and Sanatan had taken all their wealth with them to Vrindavan, seven boatloads filled with gold they gave away and much more. So Mahaprabhu could have said, first transfer all the gold somewhere in Mathura that has organized to keep it there. Let the, let the gold make the journey first. You follow and then, you know, start the work. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave them the task of reclaiming Vrindavan, which needed wealth. And Rupa and Sanatan never used the wealth they earned from Nawab Hussain Shah. And finally, the, rec the reclamation happened with wealth only, but that wealth which came through the alliance between the Rajputs and the Mughals, but 40 years later. So Roop and Sanatan during their lifetime did not see any sandstone structures. So what was Lord Chaitanya trying to do when he said, reclaim Vrindavan? Mahaprabhu knew that if the spirit is present, that spirit of devotion is the foundation for the entire mission. And if that spirit is established in the proper manner, then other things are detailed. And he needed Rupa and Sanatan to establish that spirit of what does it mean to be a resident of Braj? What does it mean to be in the mood of the Brajavasis. So Mahaprabhu was more concerned with the mood than the masonry. Dui bhai bhakta raja krishna kripa patra vyavahare rajamantri hoi rajapatra. Otherwise both of them were rajamantri. They had influence. And because they were influential in Bengal, they could have always had some alliance with somebody here and there and made sure that all the wealth get transported and then, you know, they had done so many other things for Nawab Hussain Shah, for them to start in another place would have been not so difficult. But Mahaprabhu wanted to emphasize 
to build the proper foundation and structures within the heart and consciousness is more difficult more challenging but more foundational need than the external structures and therefore vidya bhakti buddhi bale param pravin both the rup and sanatan as dabir khan sakar malik were very uh, advanced in vidya bhakti buddhi bal param pravin but mahaprabhu was not impressed with that he didn't think vrindavan will be established based on this but what was the main tabu apana ka mane trin hoite hin they considered themselves humble than a blade of grass that is what would establish the future of the mission and therefore tara dainya dekhi shuni paashana bidare ami tushta hoya tabe kahilu duhare mahaprabhu becomes pleased with their humility and being pleased with that humility mahaprabhu says uttama hoya hin kore manah apanare one who is very elevated but thinks i am unqualified then achire koribe krishna tomara uddhare then krishna is attracted so mahaprabhu's main mission is attracting the all attractive right mahaprabhu's main mission is not to set up some structures which will attract people how to attract the all attractive krishna when he is pleased pradyumna prabhu tells prabhupad shila prabhupad our philosophy is too difficult for people to understand many times what you speak you know people are not able to understand that so prabhupad said i am preaching and speaking to please krishna because what does krishna say in bhagavad gita in the last chapter that one who gives this knowledge to others is very dear to me so speaking and sharing krishna's message with others and distributing krishna's message with others is pleasing to krishna so when krishna is pleased then he will facilitate the heart transformation of the heart that is our fundamental principle in preaching that we are making repeated efforts to please krishna and when krishna is pleased then that is our success samsiddhir haritoshanam and that's what you know rup and sanatan also did is they pleased krishna they pleased lord chaitanya mahaprabhu rup goswami started writing bhakti rasamrit sindhu in 1516 he completed in 1534 18 years it took to write that bhakti rasamrit sindhu because that was his mission mahaprabhu had given instruction to him so that was the important thing for him to please the lord प्रभु आज्ञा कोयला सब शास्त्र विचार ब्रजेर निगूढ़ भक्ति कोरिला प्रचार बाय फॉलोइंग दैट ही प्लीज एंड बाय प्लीजिंग ही एस्टैब्लिश द प्रीचिंग मिशन फॉर द नेक्स्ट टेन थाउजेंड इयर्स सो देर फॉर महाप्रभु वॉन्टेड टू डेमॉन्स्ट्रेट द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ फॉलोइंग दिस थ्री प्रिंसिपल्स नामे रुचि वैष्णव सेवा jeeva daya each follow the other and then as a result of this the false conceptions gradually get dissolved and then the false ego is eradicated that is the atyantika pralay and then jeevera swaroop hoy krishnera nitya das so basically in the 12th canto this is the main subject 
universal dissolution, influence of material energy, Markande Rishi is seeing all this annihilation happening, right? But all of this annihilation, even all the fire coming out of Sankarshan's unlimited mouth, that fire cannot burn the false ego. That cannot dissolve and drown the false ego. It cannot affect touch the false ego. Only a Vaishnava's pleasure is the powerful weapon which starts destroying and cutting down the false ego. And that's why what Srila Prabhupada has created in the form of this Vaishnava Sangha of Iskon is something which is which cannot be imagined. You know, even if you compare the impact of universal dissolution, what universal dissolution cannot do, this Vaishnava Sangha within Iskon can do. Gradually destroy the false conception and false ego. So therefore, knowing that uh, properly fills our heart with gratitude to Srila Prabhupada. And then we want to share this with others. And traditionally, every December would be a period where devotees go out and distribute books because in America, it is a season of Christmas and everybody is in the mood for shopping and doing something charitable. So Prabhupada and the initial disciples of Prabhupada integrated this Christmas marathon with that whole idea. And by selling of these books, by distributing these books, the money which came, you know, I was hearing during lockdown a lot of Prabhupada memories and uh, Rameshwar Prabhu speaks an amazing pastime about how, you know, Prabhupada wrote the Bhagavatam at night and then printed it and published it. And through the distribution, whatever money came, Prabhupada personally planned that every year profits of the books were being invested to start ISKCON's preaching in one continent. So that's how systematically he explains. 1970, 71 India, then Australia, then Africa. So Prabhupada actually was personally overseeing and because Rameshwar Prabhu was heading the BBT, he, would, he was the person who would release that you know, payment. So nobody knew more than him what was Prabhupada's master plan. So the entire ISKCON has spread all across the world because of the Srimad Bhagavatam and the books written by Srila Prabhupada. So ISKCON has found its place in different continents based on these books. Even the Juhu temple, the Vrindavan temple, the, the Mayapur land, all the initial projects in India, the funding all came from the books. Therefore the books are the basis. And they are the ones which actually gave the opportunity for ISKCON to establish their temples in so many places across the world. So, we owe Srila Prabhupada and these books an eternal debt because of which we have this shelter of the Association of Devotees. So therefore, uh, in the series here at Chopati, we are going through the 12th canto. And if some of you are thinking that, but I have not read the first 11 cantos. So you have the opportunity to, you know, purchase the Bhagavatam, study these books. And if you need help, now we have online also many courses, um, multiple websites are available, where online Bhakti Vaibhav is being given, online Bhakti Shastri is being given, you know. So you could go to this website, isconcourses.com. And on isconcourses.com, all of ISKCON's online courses, whatever is available anywhere in the world, 
all of those courses have been listed at one place. So you can select whichever you know, uh, books you want to study to whatever degree of depth at your own pace and you can actually uh, relish these literatures and uh, experience the transformation which is the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through Name Ruchi, Vaishnav Seva and Jivedaya, Cheto Darpana Marjanam. So that is Srila Prabhupada's gift to all of us. And uh, on the occasion of this year's December marathon, with so many restrictions and challenges, we can always try to do our bit, whatever capacity we have. Because the mission is beyond any time, place and circumstance restriction. Thank you all very much. Srila Prabhupada ki. Krantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki Itai Gaur Primanandi